that how do you bring that change in behavior and how can it and if, if there is a change behavior can happen how can we measure because it's so so gradual that it's very difficult to capture in any any measurement and is there any way Yes, uh, as I mentioned, there are more than 6,000 peer review articles on the topic. However, in the book, we looked at only the top 60. These are the ones in the A-level best journals that have the mo most ironclad methodology. You have to be very smart about how you assess changes from meditation because it's incremental, it's gradual. There's actually a dose-response relationship. Uh, the more lifetime hours you put in, the stronger the benefits get but it's very hard to design a longitudinal study. So we use different behavioral measures. Uh, some of the striking findings that are important for business, for education and medicine, are that mindfulness and related meditation methods uh, help people focus, concentrate better. Uh, it strengthens attention. At the same time, it calms people. It uh, actually, it, it helps people recover from what we call amygdala hijacks, uh, when you get very upset or very stressed, you recover more quickly. And that combination of keen focus and a calm demeanor, which can be measured behaviorally, uh, is just exactly the right inner state to execute, whether it's in business, in medicine, or in education. And also, speaking of education, these are the skills we want to impart to children so they'll have a lifetime benefit, particularly because people today are more distracted by their tech than ever. And children, I believe, as they become adults, will benefit from the ability of what's called cognitive control, which is strengthened by mindfulness, which means you can put your attention where you want it and ignore distractions. So I think that uh, these benefits, which are behavioral, also actually show up at the brain level. We've done, uh, there's now more and more uh, brain scans being done of meditators, particularly advanced meditators, that show that the parts of the brain, the circuit, the very circuitry that manages this, gets stronger and stronger as you meditate. Uh, in terms of a behavioral measure of emotional intelligence, I strongly advocate one that I actually co-designed. It's called the ESCI, Emotional Social Competence Inventory. It looks in a behavioral way uh, at all of the dimensions of emotional intelligence. And it doesn't ask you to rate yourself only. The more important rating is from other people, the people you work with day in and day out, the people who know you well, they observe you all the time. And so we ask them to anonymously rate a target person, say an executive. Uh, and that gives us a very strong measure of a profile of strengths and limits over the 12 areas of emotional intelligence there. I mentioned the four, self-mastery, self-management, empathy or social awareness, and then interpersonal relationship skills. And within each of them, we've identified uh, competencies that make people outstanding in the workplace or as leaders. And we give very specific behavioral indicators of those. And that is another, uh, I think, excellent way to assess anyone's emotional intelligence.